What's going on boys and girls and welcome back to Ant Devil Entertainment, the most awesome geek and car culture YouTube channel in South Africa. I am your host Uzwile Tumatlaum and welcome back to my 50 greatest films ever made review series according to IMDb. And today we're having a look at Braveheart. Now Braveheart is a film written, no not written, but directed and produced by Mel Gibson, uh, released in 1995 and it was set in the 15th century of uh, Scotland's history. Braveheart was actually one of those films that had a big part in its contribution towards revolutionizing the film industry. Um, that's where we basically saw a resurgence of the sword and sandal type of epic genre films, where we had like, you know, these long epics that eventually made way for films like the Lord of the Rings trilogy, you know, films like Avengers Endgame, which eventually came out um, very recently. And uh, it was the film that sort of also established Mel Gibson's very particular directing style. Matter of fact, when I first heard about this movie way back when it came out, I never actually saw it, but I never knew it was actually directed by Mel Gibson. I thought Mel Gibson's directorial debut was um, Passion of the Christ. But um, of course, when I saw this movie and started researching a little bit about it, I realized that he had actually started on that path a lot earlier than what I thought. So Braveheart is a historically well, okay, a lot of people would argue that it's not historically accurate, but it's based on true historical events. Um, it follows the story of William Wallace, who was a Scotsman back in those times, and um, he was a bit of a pacifist as far as things like war and violence are concerned. And it was only when his father and his brother went away to war and made, was later killed during that battle that he was eventually then motivated, much like Bruce Wayne, to take up the mantle of being a warrior. So eventually he then goes away with his uncle. Um, I think his name was Argyle, played by Brian Cox, who appears in the X-Men films as, um, what was his name again? General Stryker, um, who then basically takes him on a bit of a pilgrimage. He travels with him around Europe. He learns a lot of things. He teaches him the ways of war. And he also actually teaches him how to be a man, basically. And when he comes back, um, he realizes that, you know, the Scots are under English rule, a very unfair and tyrannical rule, where um, rules like Prima Nocta were then, then uh, installed into the society. Prima Nocta meaning that whenever a, um, there's going to be a marriage in the area, um, the bride has to sleep with the English nobleman first as a celebration of their union. So because of this, um, William Wallace then marries his um, childhood love in secret, and, but then it's quickly discovered by the Englishmen who start, start, start to get suspicious about it. And um, they try to rape her. And then when they fight back for this, she's publicly executed, which then engulfs William Wallace in a blinding rage. And he leads a revolution against the English, um, which then a war ensues where they basically travel from place to place, just eradicating English rule. And he starts off by publicly executing the very person that executed his wife. So. In this story, William Wallace became a bit of a legend because, you know, stories of his exploits started to spread far and wide. Um, people started to make up fables and tales about him. You know, he was this, like, 50-foot man, you know, he could breathe fire. Um, he could, like, you know, just take out the English single-handedly with very supernatural feats. And um, along the way, he, he also, you know, he inspired a lot of people to join his cause. But, um, as the classic adage goes, you know, whoever has unpopular ideals and stands up to people, the people that try to rally around him find it very difficult to stand with him because majority rule, you know? Um, they are standing up against impossible odds that he's willing to go up against, but then they aren't so sure whether they can do that with him. And as a result, he actually gets betrayed along the film um, by quite a few people who, who regret it deeply, but they do it anyway because of the Herculean task involved in actually standing with William Wallace. So it was a very it was a very good film. Um, I won't spoil the ending for anyone who still wants to see it and hasn't seen it yet. But um, that's the lesson that I got from it. You know, it's that it's that whole thing of, of rising up and standing up against adversity, believing in an ideal and carrying it through and living out that particular value in your life. Um, but Mel Gibson played the role of William Wallace very, very charismatically. From the onset, you could see that he's a very likable character especially in the events leading up to him courting his eventual wife. You know, he was very sort of like charming and endearing. Um, he was very whimsical in his approach. Um, he even showed off some of the things that he learned on his travels, like speaking French to her and stuff like that. And as you all know, French is the language of love. And um, the supporting cast was also very good as well. 
um, the villain in the film, King Longshanks, as he was called. I think he was Edward the something, I forget the number. But um, one of his aliases was, was, that he went by was King Longshanks. He was one of those villains that you are deeply motivated to hate. You know, you just see the guy come on screen and you just you don't just hate him for the purposes of the fact that he's the antagonist in the film. You actually hate him on a very deeply personal level. And that's how you know the guy's doing the job as well and that the film is also very well written. Um, Braveheart was a very, very well made film and there are a lot of reasons why it actually earned its spot on the 50 greatest films of all time. It was actually nominated for 10 Academy Awards and it won five which are uh, Best Director, Mel Gibson, Best Picture, Best Cinematography, Best Makeup, as well as Best uh, Sound Effects Editing. So yeah, Braveheart is definitely a, a, um, you know, a worthwhile watch if you want to revisit you know, action films and epics of the past. And uh, it definitely gets my, my seal of approval. So that's where I'm going to end my review for today. If you've seen the film, let me know what you thought of it in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this review, please click on the thumbs up icon and leave us a like. If you'd like to see more, please click subscribe and be sure to ring that bell icon so you are notified each and every time I drop new content on this video channel. As usual people, I have been with it to my family. Thanks for hanging out with me. And as always, I urge you to take care of each other, stay awesome, stay chasing your dreams to infinity and beyond.